we all probably want a PT, but not many of us can afford them. So the question I'm going to be answering here is AI now in a state where it can actually replace personal trainers. So yeah, probably going to be some unpopular opinions here, but I'm basically just going to pull up uh, a complete uh, personal training program and diet that I've done completely through ChatGPT. Chat We're going to talk through it. I know a little bit about fitness, so I'll be critiquing it and things like that. Um, but yeah, let's have a look. And honestly, I, like this tool just continues to, to blow my mind. It really is, um, really is quite incredible. So the first thing I've asked it here is like, can I get a fitness program for the gym? Uh, I'm 80 kilos and I'm looking to put on some muscle. And then I put, I'd like to work out three days a week. Okay, instantly spits me out this workout A, B, and C. So three different, uh, three different days uh, with like some pretty sensible exercises. Not gonna lie, you've just got classic compound lifts in here. Um, you know, you've got your kind of like lat pull downs and, uh, you know, a slight, a slight kind of rest uh, rest day on, on, on the second one. And then back to your big like deadlifts uh, and squats on day three uh, with some cardio mixed in there. Like, honestly, if you just kind of like Googled at the moment, like a classic three day sp split, this is probably what it's going to spit out for you. Uh, so nothing too surprising, but it is kind of cool that it can just give you that backbone. Okay, here's where it kind of gets interesting. So now I'm gonna say, right, I've got a shoulder injury. Can you take out any exercises where it's gonna injure my shoulder? Now, at first it got a bit confused. It just like basically told me to not do overhead presses. And then I just asked it, could I have a revised workout plan that removes these exercises? And it basically gave me, you know, a new plan um, that didn't have any like shoulder press or, you know, anything that, that, that might kind of injure my shoulders. Now, the thing is, there's lateral raises uh, still in here, which, you know, arguably could still injure your shoulder. So I don't think you want to trust this thing uh, completely. But yeah, kind of interesting what it's what it's pulling out here, giving me, you know, an updated plan that, that isn't going to uh, affect my affect my shoulder. Then I just asked it to remove the cardio. So it did that spit the same workout plan out again. OK, this I think is really cool. Uh, so if you're like into fitness, usually what you're going to do is calculate the amount that you should be lifting based on your one rep max. And there's calculators online that you can find to do this. But I basically just asked ChatGPT, look, my one rep max on the bench press is about 100 kilos. How much weight should I lift for that exercise? And it said, you know, generally aim between 80 and 90 percent of that one rep max. 80 to 90 kilos per set. Now it hasn't given me the rep range here, which is kind of useless because it's like, right, okay, per set, what does that mean? Is that per set of three, of five, of 10? So I asked it to incorporate that weight into the program that it just sent. And again, spits out a revised workout plan, not only with the bench press stats, but also with everything to do with the kind of accessory movements as well kind of confusing that it's just given me the exact same for squat and for bench press um so i did actually ask them about this like why have you given me the same squat rate as uh you know as bench press weight and says so i've given you the same squat weight as bench press weight because both exercises require you to lift a certain amount of weight okay whatever i think i can actually squat about 20 kilos more on that from the rep range that you've given me so i asked it to incorporate that into the program and then again it just spat out a revised program that's bumped up the squat stuff. It really is like having a conversation with a real person. Like it's it's pretty uncanny to be honest. And yeah, I honestly think that this is probably the same level of service that you would see from some of these like shitty PTs uh, the, that you find at the gym that are basically just giving you like template workout programs. Um, so it really is, really is kind of interesting. Right, now we're gonna get onto the diet plan. Uh, this is where I think it actually does an even better job than on the workout. So imagine I got my workout here and now I'm like, okay, how, you know, what am I gonna eat? So it gives me some like, again, kind of misunderstands me, maybe I haven't worded it exactly correctly, but it just gives me some boilerplate on, you know, what I should do for a, for, for a diet plan. And then I've asked for a specific example of a daily diet plan. I'm giving them actually quite a lot of information here because I'm saying that, you know, I currently eat around 2000 calories a day. My weight's been constant. So from that, it could theoretically calculate my you know basal metabolic rate um and then i said i'd like to put on some muscles so it's then output me this breakfast lunch snack and dinner uh and again this is just like a very kind of classic this is almost like a kind of bodybuilding style uh dinner here um or meal plan should i say but 
kind of interesting that it can spit this out. And again, probably not much different to what you would get from just some, uh, you know, like low level PT who is not really going to be customizing stuff too much for you. And then I've given, asked for the macronutrient breakdown and it's given me the split in percentages and then I actually asked for it in grams and calories. So again here, it's giving me 200 to 500 more uh, calories than it has for my basal rate, which is about in line, you know, if you want to be putting on, you know, between a, a quarter and, and a half a kilo um, a week, then this is, um, this is going to probably, probably do that for you with like a few hundred extra calories. And then I've asked for it in the macronutrient breakdown. So 150 to 200 grams of protein, uh, 250 to 300 grams of carb and, you know, 45 to 60 grams of fat. Again, seems pretty reasonable. You know, you could get into debates about, you know, do you actually, you know, need this much protein? I think they argued that you need, you know, one pound per gram, which if you look at the literature, it, you know, generally is kind of a, a consensus. Um, you know, the fats, you don't want to go too low because you might affect your, um, you know, uh, hormone levels and things like that. So yeah, pretty uh, sensible diet plan. And then I've asked it to give me an example recipe for the lunch meal because this doesn't look too fucking inspiring, does it really? Like four ounces of lean protein, a cup of rice and some uh, vegetables. So it's basically given me, you know, some stuff with, you know, a bit of oil in there as well um, and given me the exact uh, recipe for that dinner. Okay, then I've asked it to optimize for testosterone. So you know, imagine that you're, uh, you know, a guy like me, like coming up to your 30s, you're probably looking to make sure that you're keeping your testosterone levels high. And again, it's, it's not quite understood what I want. It's given me some boilerplate around, um, you know, what, what I should do to, to, to get to get a higher testosterone level. But then I asked it to update the meal plan with the foods. And it's come in here, it's slightly changed it, you know, it's added the, you know, virgin oil here, it's added the uh, spinach, uh, it's added some oysters. I mean, I'm not sure how, <laughs> how weird of a meal this would be, but who knows, you know, maybe you have the oysters to start and then you have the lean protein. Um, and then I've asked about some supplements as well. And it said like, you know, a zinc supplement, which is perfectly, um, you know, logical if you're looking to, to optimize testosterone um, and also creatine. I just think this is pretty good. Like if you're a beginner and you're just looking for like the basics, like a, you know, a basic meal plan, a basic workout plan, honestly, like save yourself on a, on a PT and you can just get the information here in five minutes. I'm sure there's going to be apps that are built if they're not already that are just basically using this technology to to output this this kind of stuff. But yeah, I think it's very very interesting. Honestly, I do. Um, personally, for me, like, would I use this? Yeah, I think I might. Um, you know, if I was like looking for a specific meal with a specific macronutrient breakdown, I could just bang it into here and yeah, find find something cool. So yeah, just wanted to go over that really. Thought it was really interesting uh, use case for ChatGPT. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions or concerns, uh, please leave them um, you know in in the comments below. One thing obviously is like this is you know not uh, medical advice, right? I think people would maybe take this too literally and just follow it word for word. Clearly, um, you know, we saw here that it was giving me, you know, perhaps exercise recommendations that could have been harmful. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, has made it very clear, like this is still in the very early stages. Uh, ChatGPT answers with a lot of confidence, regardless of how I think confident it might be in its in its answer. Um, and this, I think, can give people, you know, the impression that they should just listen to it, you know, ver ver verbatim. Um, but yeah, I think honestly, if you're just looking for for, for something you know fairly decent in a very low amount of time uh this is this is kind of cool so yeah thanks a lot and see you next time